Hey everybody, Max Kevin here. So let's do podcast. It's not too long. Hey everybody, how's your career going? How's your? Are you doing good? You doing great? Are you making good life choices? Do you work at UPS, making one hundred seventy thousand dollars a year, just to sit at red lights, be a fat lazy fuck, fucking bullshit, dude? Oh, anyway, uh, my career is going to. I don't have a career. I have three part time jobs. I have three part time jobs. <laughs> I have three part time jobs because of of regulations that that universities don't want to pay so they they maximize they max your hours at 10 hours a week god damn god damn yeah anyway uh, i'm uh, very blood red already no uh, of course uh i don't know if you guys know this um most universities uh over here in japan uh you know you gotta you gotta apply six months six months out they uh you gotta apply in september and uh, september october to be hired in april right and uh of course, that's that's uh, that's actually quite fast because uh, over in America you gotta you gotta apply a year out. You apply in fucking a year before they hire you. You know, apparently it takes them a long time just to uh, look at resumes and uh, interview people. You know, it takes a whole goddamn year. I don't know. That's that's efficient. Schools are efficient. Um. Anyway, oh, they should they should teach their students how to be efficient, right? Yeah, they should they should make a class called how to be efficient. Yeah, that's what that's what universities should do. Anyway, um. So um. Yeah, I applied to. Um, I've, been, I've been applying to uh, more jobs recently. You know, uh, full time jobs, uh, other part time jobs because I want to quit one of my. Well, I, I want to quit one of my part time jobs because it's fucking terrible, and the students are all terrible, and the uh, director of the English program is fucking terrible, and uh, it's just ter- it's just terrible. Everything's terrible, so I definitely want to quit that job. You know, I, uh, my other two schools are going good. You know, so anyway, I I uh, I, uh, I got an interview. Actually, at this uh, this one university over here, it's one, it's a very prestigious uh, you know it's one of the Ivy League schools over here in uh, in Japan, you know uh, J- Japanese Ivy League schools. Uh, I got an interview there, and uh, you know that's the, the reason why I I applied there. Uh, not because not because they're an Ivy League school, but because they actually let you teach four classes in one day. So <laughs> instead of all the other uh, all the other schools only let you, uh, only let you teach two classes a day. Uh, this one will actually let you teach four classes a day. So I was like, oh my God, I can actually work a one full day. Oh, oh, this is awesome. I don't have to, I don't have to work two classes and then ride another train another hour and a half and then work two more classes and then ride another train hour and a half back to my, oh great. I don't have to ride the train three hours a day. I can just go to this one school. Oh, awesome. You know, so that's why I applied there. And they, they decided to interview me, which, you know, goddamn well they should. Cause I'm fucking awesome, dude. I'm fucking awesome, dude. Uh, and um yeah they interviewed me and uh you know they uh they talked a lot about motivation of course you know they're like how do you how do you motivate your students cuz i mean that's basically the main problem here you know here in japan is uh kids don't want to study at all you know cuz they're forced to take these english classes and they're just like fuck this i don't want to take this class i'm fucking 18 years old all right i want to fucking get drunk and get laid i want a girlfriend i don't care about this class you know uh it's basically you know they have no direction in life you know so they don't have fully, they don't have fully developed uh, prefrontal cortexes, you know. So they can't think about the future. They can't think about their own future, you know. They can't think about how they're when they're twenty five, they're not going to have a goddamn any job skills, you know. So they better start studying for the next seven years so they can be fucking useful to society, you know. Uh, they don't think about any of that, you know, because they're eighteen. Of course, neither did I. Uh, neither does anyone really, because uh, no one has fully developed prefrontal cortexes until they're twenty five years old. So it's difficult to think about the future. So anyway, uh, you know, that's that's a big problem. In schools here, you know, because the kids don't even want to study their their main subjects, their majors, you know, so they definitely don't want to study English, you know. And, uh, of course, I remember the first time I uh, came to Japan. Uh, I worked at a Eikaiwa, which is, you know, a private language school. It teaches adults and stuff, you know. And the CEO, we had a little two-week training session, you know, and the, after the two-week training session, the CEO comes gives us a speech, right? And he's like, you're not English teachers. And I was thinking, like, what? What is this guy talking about? He's like, you're not English teachers, you're just your motivators, okay? That's your job. It's just to motivate the students and make them have fun, you know, because it kind of makes sense for that school. Like, they don't really want them to actually learn English because they want them to keep coming and keep paying tuition, you know? So, like, it makes more sense to have students that just always come there, you know? And they just want to hang out and have fun and, like, be motivated to come to come to class, you know? And, uh, you know, I didn't really understand it at the time, you know, but uh, that's... a what he said was, is exactly true, you know? I mean, that's... Like, as a teacher, your your main job is, is motivational speaker, you know? It's telling the kids, stop being fat, lazy fucks. 
and hit the goddamn books. All right? You can't speak. You studied English six years, and all you can say is, I eat. You need to hit the goddamn, goddamn books, you know? Uh, so, so they, you know, they asked me about motivation, like, what I do, to, how do I, you know, and I just tell them, it's like, well, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the kids need to study something they're interested in, you know, they need to enjoy the class, they need to think that it's useful, you know? I mean, I remember when I was going to college, you know, I go to these classes, and I'd be like, this is fucking useless, man. This teacher's fucking dumb. I hate this game. You know? So I, I didn't want to go to that class, so, you know, I guess that's, that's the main thing, is that the teacher needs to be likable, you know, because... I don't know about you guys, but for me, like, the subjects that I excelled in are the ones where I like the teacher, you know? It's like, even if I didn't like the subject, if you like the teacher, then you kind of, you're kind of, you know, you don't want to disappoint your teacher, you know? So it's very important that the teacher is likable, you know? And uh, that's that's the most important. And then, of course, you have to uh, allow the students to study something that they're interested in, you know? because And that's the same thing with, like, exercise, right? The best exercise is the one that you do, you know? And, uh... It's the same thing with studying. Studying language too is the uh, the best uh, the best uh, way to study any language is uh, you know it's like is it listening? Is it reading? Is it doing flashcards? Well, it's the one that you'll do, you know, because because most people are fat, lazy fucks, and they don't study at all, you know. So the best way to study English is to is to do you know do whatever whatever it is that you enjoy doing, you know, do something you're interested in, you know. So um, and of course uh, you know the uh, the schools they uh, they uh, they use textbooks that talk about you know. Uh, social justice warrior bullshit and, you know, su- su- sustainable development goals, you know, global warming and deforestation. Like, God, we're using this book about fucking, this, the article that the kids are supposed to read is talking about deforestation, you know. And I'll have all the kids, like, uh, you know, look up all the words they don't know. And they're like, what is a log? I'm like, well, you know, it's like a it's like a piece of wood, you know. It's, yeah, it's a very useful word. You're going to use it every day, log. And they're like, what is deforestation? It's like, you know, it means to cut down the trees. Oh, yeah, it's going to, it's gonna, you're definitely going to use that in your uh, IT job there. You know, it's very useful, you know. So these fucking textbooks that they use are goddamn useless, you know, because they're not interesting at all, you know. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. You know, so anyway, um, so we were talking about that stuff, and, uh, you know, we were talking about my different classes. I don't know. Somehow they kind of they kind of tricked me. They sort of tricked me into talking about the one university that's fucking terrible, you know, because the kids are not motivated at all, you know, cause, because basically the, the director of the English program told them, they tell all the kids. He tells us to tell all the kids on the first day that as long as they attend class, they will get a C. So they don't have to do shit. And that's basically all the, That's all the kids do. They just come to class and just sit there and they get pissed off that I'm talking, that I'm trying to talk to them, you know? And they have no desire to study English at all, you know? And uh, I, I said, I accidentally said that. And I, I shouldn't have said that. That was a mistake. Because, well, two weeks later, I didn't get the job. I didn't get the job, so uh, no, I, be- I definitely should never have told the truth. That was dumb. I should have just lied and be like, "Yeah, all my students are—they're super motivated. They love, they love studying because I'm so cool. That's why they love me. You know, they love me and my le- like. I mean, seriously, like, you know what else I should have—I should have asked them, like, what's what is their suggestion? What if? My, yeah, you got the secret. Do you know the secret to motivation? Because no one fucking does. You know, the secret to motivation is these these kids are fucking depressed. They hate their life. They hate their parents. They hate the fact that they're not getting laid, basically, you know, and they don't—they don't give a shit at all about school. You know, it's a—it's a—it's a, it's a, it's a, a nuisance to them, you know. Don't you remember when you were eighteen years old? You have—you have the secret to to motivating eighteen-year-olds to study something they don't want to study. If you, if you got that secret, let me know. That's what I should—that's what I should have said. Uh, I didn't say that, uh, of course. And um, yeah, another question, like you know, at the time, like when I had the interview, I thought it was—I thought it was pretty good, but then I thought it was a decent interview, but then. Um, because I guess I told the truth, you know, and uh, no, nothing, none of the questions were easy. I, I, I didn't hesitate about anything, you know. Uh, like they asked me a question, like what do you like? What uh, what's the biggest problem? You know, what's the biggest uh, hurdle for uh, students? And I said, well, they don't know how to study. That's that's the biggest problem. They don't know how to study. And <laughs> the guy, the guy interviewed me. He like laughed. And he said, he's like, really? And uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, they really, they don't know how to study. Because, okay, like, I, I don't know. I'm guessing they wanted to, they wanted me to say motivation, but we are, we already just talked about motivation for like 20 minutes. So, you know, in my mind, I was thinking like, well, he means besides motivation, right? Besides motivation, what else is there? And if, if you are motivated to study and you know how to study, there's nothing else you need, right? It's like exercise. If you are motivated to lose weight, and you know how to exercise, you don't need a personal trainer, right? You can just do it, you know? <laughs> if you don't if you don't feel motivated and you don't know how to study, that's why you hire the personal trainer, 
right? And, so, and basically, what I, what I try to do in all of my classes is I teach is I try to teach the kids how to study, because uh, you know after this after this year, they're not going to be able you know, they're they're going to need those skills if they want to continue speak, learning English, and they know how to study it. You know they can continue by themselves. They don't need this fucking useless university. You know, I mean basically I, I I'm a university teacher. I think universities are basically obsolete. You know because we have the internet now. You know. It's like if you're motivated, you can just use the internet. You can learn anything you want. It's like, why? What are you coming to school for? You know, There's a lot better teachers on the internet than just me. You know, I'm fucking useless. You know, I'm a useless piece of shit. You know? uh, so uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. Now that I think about it, like he laughed at that answer. It's like, well, what else is there? If they, you know, that I mean, and it's true too. They don't know how to study. Most people don't know how to study language because the thing about language is it's basically just memorization. You just have to memorize. 5,000 words. That's, and once you do that, you can speak the language, right? It's just pure memorization. And the best way to memorize is through spaced repetition, right? Which is you, you know, you do flashcards and you have to do it multiple times a day, right? You can't just, like, you know, when most people study for a test, they'll cram, you know, they'll, before the night of the test or whatever, they'll cram like two or three hours or whatever. But memorization of words doesn't work like that. You have to do spaced repetition where you, you study for 10 minutes every hour, right? You study for five minutes every hour. You study 10 times a day for very short intervals. That's the best way to remember something, right? You can, you know, it's the best way to remember anything. It's the best way to memorize anything, right? It's, it's through spaced repetition, right? And most people don't know this. Uh, like, when they're studying languages, I mean, uh, it's, it's amazing how few people know this. And, like, I guess the only reason I know it is because I'm in the language teaching field, you know? So, so it's, uh, I mean, it's the first thing I teach my students, when I go to class, like, uh, yeah, and, and, and like these kids, they have studied English for six years already. So if if they knew how to study and they were motivated for six years, they should already be conversational level. They should be, they shouldn't be in my class because my classes were the beginner levels, which are you know, uh, if they're they're still at the beginner level even after six years of studying, it's like something's wrong, something's wrong. Uh, yeah. So anyway, I didn't get that job. I don't know who they hired, but uh, the person definitely lied about motivating their students. So anyway, I'm a little pissed off about that. I'm a little pissed off about that, you know, uh, quite pissed off about that. You know, I, uh, I applied for some other full-time jobs. They didn't, uh, didn't even interview me there. That's, uh, kind of, kind of pissed off about that. You know, a lot of these full-time jobs, they want you to have research there, you know, they want you to have three, three research articles and you got to have to publish three research articles. They don't care about my books. You know, I've written over 10 books, bestsellers in the language categories. Uh, no one cares about that, even though it's much, it's a much bigger accomplishment than anything They've probably published, you know, any, any fucking dumbass scientific article they've published, you know, uh, you know, uh, fucking useless, useless scientific articles that, uh, don't further the field at all. They're completely fucking useless, but Hey, you published three of them. So we'll hire you. Uh, can't hire the person that's written 10 books over 10 books, bestseller books. Fuck that guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. The thing, that's the thing is. If you want to be hired full time, you need to have three published articles, right? And I'm I'm certain everyone just like me, just they just want a full time job, you know. So it's like, okay, I got to do this fucking. I don't want to do this research, but I have to. Otherwise, they won't hire me. So I'm just gonna do some fucking useless research, and I'll publish it. And then my other useless people that I work with, they'll they'll peer review it, and they'll you know they're fucking useless too. So they'll they'll put their stamp on it. They'll put their useless fucking stamp on it, and I'll publish it. And then and then I'll have it. And then I'll have my job. And that's why there's so much fucking useless research out there in the world. And this this is just in the language field. God damn, I, I, I saw an article the other day. It was from Harvard. It was from Harvard. And it said, it said, uh, it said uh, red meat causes diabetes, causes type 2 diabetes. <laughs> oh, God. And, and the, in, the, in the, the, research, the research article, all they did was a survey, right? They just surveyed people, like what they're, what they're eating. And they, they found the correlation that if you eat People that eat red meat have a higher incidence of type two diabetes, right? But but type two diabetes is is caused by eating too much sugar, right? It's caused by eating too many calories, being fat, obesity, right? Because your your pancreas can't make enough insulin to keep up with your fat ass body and all the goddamn sugar you're putting in it, you know. So it starts dying. It's like oh god, fuck this, you know. And uh, and uh, well, meat doesn't have any sugar, uh, so you know unless you're eating the only way you know, meat can turn into sugar is if you don't eat enough fat or enough carbs, and then your body will turn protein into sugar, but that, 
it's 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 very difficult to do that you know you have to eat pure pure protein <laughs> with no fat like even on a ketogenic diet you're eating a lot of fat you know so uh yeah it uh it never happened and th- this was a harvard study this was harvard harvard the 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 most famous school in america is publishing this fucking nonsense bullshit vegan propaganda and why probably because the person writing it wanted to get their three articles so they could get a full-time job somewhere at harvard you know because they won't they won't hire them unless they have these three bullshit scientific articles they're like oh what okay okay you know what i'll do i'll make a survey i'll just you know because i don't want to do actual research you know i'll just do surveys you know god that's another thing fucking (laughs) surveys are not research okay (laughs) it's not i mean in a sense it is because you're you're like you're gathering information but you know you you don't have an you're not doing an experiment you know what i mean you if you don't do an experiment it's not science god damn it anyway uh anyway so um yeah, I can't uh, I can't get a full time job there because um, I don't have any I don't have any published articles. You know, I don't have any published scientific articles. I don't know. I was even talking with some of my other coworkers there. You know, and they're basically talking about all the all the research they do is just surveys. It's just basically surveys of their students. They just survey their students. You know, and I was thinking I could do that. You know, what motivates you to study English? I'll make a survey. Do, do I motivate you to study English? Does your textbook motivate you to study English? Does your mom motivate you to study English? Does the fact that you might be able to bang a white girl with blonde hair motivate you to study English? You know, I'll just give that survey to all my students. They can check the boxes, and I can put it in a little. I can write it up in a little paper, publish it in an article, and then I'll be I'll be a scientist. I'll be an official scientist. Be like, well, ninety seven percent of the boys said. That fucking blonde girls made them motivated to study English, but only only three percent of the girls said fucking blonde girls would make them want to study. I don't know something's wrong with this science, man. Oh god. Anyway, anyway, God, that doesn't even that doesn't even take into account the uh, the uh, the bullshit uh, of applying to uh, work in uh, American universities there. You know, because uh, uh, other than your uh, other than your uh, scientific articles, your bullshit scientific articles there that you need, uh, you also need to write write a statement of diversity. I don't know what the fuck does that even mean. You know, yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's, it's basically a paper that you have to write to prove that you're not a racist. You know, and, uh, God, you read, you read some of these samples, some of the samples they provide, you know, cause it's like, cause everyone, when everyone sees that, what the statement of diversity, what the fuck is that? You know? So you uh, look at their examples, their example essays, you know, it's like, oh, this person's like, oh, well, you know, when I was a, uh, a, a, a younger, I, after I graduated university, I didn't want to go into the private field so i volunteered at an orphanage in africa and i worked there for three years just raising all the african babies and i found them homes i found them good homes you know and then there was there was a dirty well and we cleaned the well and and now all the all the little african babies have clean water and then i decided to come back here and be an english teacher and it's like what you fucking this is what you, you I, I can't work for your i can't work for your university unless i volunteered at an orphanage in some third world country it's like what like how how many how many immigrant refugees do i need to rescue you know it's like can i rescue people from ukraine i mean they're white do, do they count do the jewish do the, uh, what if i rescue jewish people or or palestinian people which one am i allowed you know jesus christ Diver- okay <laughs> the whole thing about it is like okay i'm an english i'm an english language teacher right do you think that r- racist people would ever go into this field? Why would a, a person who is genuinely racist enter the profession of teaching English to foreigners? Does that make any goddamn sense? I mean, our whole profession is increasing diversity because we are allowing communication of different cultures, right? We're allowing different cultures to communicate, right? By teaching them language. So the job itself is increasing diversity and, and equality and your mom's butthole, all right? So, goo, <laughs> goo. How, how come no one ever, th- how come these people at the at the university top, how did they get in that position to like make these, make these fucking, these fucking diversity statements? Like I remember before I, uh, before I got my master's degree, right? It was like 2016 and I was looking at the jobs, right? None of them had these diversity statements, you know? But then, Something happened in 2016. Oh, I know what happened. Trump got elected. Trump got elected, and every university started making making their candidates uh, 
required to uh, fill out these diversity statements, which basically just means no white people. It's basically what it means. Unless you're, you know, you can be mixed, mixed race. That's good, you know. Of course, uh, if you're, you know, Irish and German and uh, English and Scottish and, uh, you know, Scandinavian and Iceland, those don't count as mixed race because they're all white and Russians too. Any, any of the white races, they don't, they're all one race. They're all one race called white people. They're the cause of all problems. God, and you got one of these writing, these writing jobs I was looking at, you know, they're like, it's a, it's a UC San Diego, right? And they're like different, seven different colleges of writing within the university, right? And like, they each have different, different topics, you know, because like people that are studying humanities go to this one, and the people that are studying science go to this one, and there's people that are studying dolphins go to this one, you know, so there's like seven different ones, right? And two of them, two of them on their mission statement, they're like, they're like, our, our college is focused on creating communicators of anti-racism. It's like, what? okay, what does that even mean? How do you, what, what is it, what does it mean to be anti-racist? Does that just mean normal? Is that, is that called normal? Oh, you don't, oh, you're, oh, you're normal, you're, you're promoting community, normal people. That's what you're doing? Oh, okay. All right. Oh, oh, you're anti-murder? Oh my, oh, wow, you're a hero. Oh my God. How does it? How do you, how do you, how, man, you're so brave. You're anti-murder. Wow. Oh, you're anti-theft? Oh, my God. You don't believe in stealing? Holy shit. You should have a medal. Wow. It, has anyone ever given you a medal? You don't believe in theft or murder or, or rape. Wow. Wow. Oh, my, oh, you're a goddamn fucking hero. Holy shit. Because I believe in all those things. I think, I think murder, raping, and killing, and, and thieving, and, and racism, that's fucking awesome. That's a, wow, you, and you don't? Oh my god. Wow, how did you? You're so much better than me. You know, anyway, thanks for listening. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow.